Hello everyone and welcome to a new integral audio upload. We will have a look at the new Stereo Savage update from Plugin Boutique. And if you're not familiar with it, this is a Stereo Widener, Shaper and Enhancer. This is the sort of plugin that you will either love and use religiously or you will simply just not care about it. It has a nice simple but packed interface. Maybe the prime cause of phasing issues if you're not careful with it. So before we get into this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this and visit IntegralAudio.com for more details and reviews. Without any further ado, let's get started. Stereo shapers allow you to separate instruments and spread them into stereo field, which is going to give you wider mixes. You can also add motion or liveliness with stereo modulation as we will see in the integrated LFO. And lastly, with stereo field processing you can improve the soundscape of mono instruments and vocals. Let's check this quick example and let's see how much of a difference it will make just by applying it without further tweaking to the default settings. Lately I've been thinking of you, of you, oh, oh. I bet you're thinking, thinking of me, of me, yeah. Lately I've been thinking of you, of you, oh, oh. I bet you're thinking, thinking of me, of me, yeah. The vocal we just listened to was mono, and to generate stereo effects from it, we need to use one of the effects on here. Otherwise, it will remain mono, and pretty much anything we do to it is going to be purposeless, except maybe for panning, like so. Lately, I've been thinking of you, of you, oh. I bet you're thinking of me, of me, yeah. So, for stereo generation, it could be done through detuning. It basically just copies the original signal and detunes it, and then assigns them to the left and to the right channel. There's still a difference between them to make it seamless and natural. So this is more of an imitation of a backing vocal take that was a little different or less perfect than the lead vocal to make it sound more human. Or there is delay, or reflect, which adds aggressive early reflections to make the stereo effects. And lastly, we have split, and this one could be the most natural sounding. It just multiplies the frequency bands and pans them through left and right channels. Of course, the amount of the effect and mix level will decide whether it's more of a in-your-face type of a thing or just a uh, subtle and transparent. So let's try to play our vocal through the four different effects and see how it sounds. I personally see myself using this a lot for vocals, especially if I have only like one vocal take. Um, this will help me create bigger uh, vocals easier through vocal doubling, harmonies, and other effects. And even the artifacts from extreme settings that could arise from this plugin may be usable in musical context, depending on the genre, of course. Lately, I've been thinking of you, of you, oh, oh. I bet you're thinking, thinking of me, of me, yeah. Lately, I've been thinking of you, of you, oh, oh. I bet you're thinking, thinking of me, of me, yeah. Now, let's explore the rest of the plugin sections and functions. There's an input routing over here, which could be used to enable or disable the stereo information from one channel or the other. You could also swap channels, or convert to mono if you wanted, or also go to mid-side or side mid. There's also phase inversion if you want to do that kind of a thing. And in the center here we have a beautiful Ganyu meter and a phase correlation meter. This basically gives you information about the placement of the audio within your stereo field how it starts and how it ends. And for the phase correlation, pretty much all you need to know is as long as it's on the right side, there's minimal to no phase issues and vice versa when it's on the other side. And then there is the pan and pre-pan, width and rotation, pretty straightforward. But you need to know that the more width you introduce, the more phase issues are to show up and more artifacts. And the less width, the more transparent sort of effect. You might want to uh, listen to your output in mono at the end of the day to make sure it still sounds good because phasing may cause some sounds to be quieter than intended or even completely cancelled out. And that could be done through setting your output to mono from here and there's also a gain knob to set the output at a desirable level. 
Let's not forget about the rotation control, which is a more natural form of panning. It moves the central sound within the stereo field without affecting the placement of the sounds. And this is going to be more evident when I play a sound with reverb on it. You're just going to see how, how it works. I'm going to test it in just a second. And lastly, my favorite two sections on here, and these two make this, uh, this plugin very much viable for me. So there is the bass bypass, which really literally bypasses anything or any frequency information below a sit frequency. So you just set the frequency and it's only going to process, uh, like, let's say, starting from 300, 200, whatever you set it to. Uh, and this is very good because it keeps the low end information clean and no muddiness whatsoever or phasing issues. And then we have the LFO, and this is key to keeping or making your sounds, especially vocals and instruments, sound realistic and natural, and we will have a few examples with it as well. I used one of the presets on this arpeggio and I added some LFO. I used pan LFO on this one to give us some movement in the stereo field. Usually, if I use arpeggios in a song, I would have them more in the background, not as loud as this example now. So they will just fill the field and add texture as well as depth and that's exactly what they are good for. Adding stereo enhancement to bass might be a good idea, sometimes, especially if you have different bass layers covering different frequency ranges. Processing the top end of the bass and bypassing the low end to keep it clean may yield interesting sounds. I used LFO again, but I modulated the width so the top end will be wider every half note. It was a very modest amount of 0.1 because you don't want to go crazy with this one or things will get messy. A pad spreader preset, it sounded subtle. I automated the rotation in the third time to be totally rotated to the right side. As you could hear, it was natural as I mentioned earlier and sounded good because the pad itself went to the right channel but the reverb remained in the center. <laughs> sounded really good on guitar. Again, the rotation of the signals would be a great option for natural sounding panning. This would be ideal in reserving space for something like a lead vocal without burying a lead guitar at the same time, if that's the case. I used the bass bypass and didn't process the low end of the guitar to keep it centered as much as possible, and that gives different vibes. There are different effects and different amounts and everything is going to yield a different result. So each is going to be good for a certain scenario so make sure to check them out and experiment with them. I've been this way for too long, for too long. You said you'd stay, but sure gone, but sure gone. I've been this way for too long, for too long. You said you'd stay. 
But so good, but so good. Promise me you'll say I'm not the same, not the same. Detune and delay may be best for vocals. And let's try the last one, reflection. I left it for last because it doesn't always sound great to be honest. So let's just see how it's going to sound. I've been this way for too long, for too long. You said you'd stay, but so gone, but so gone. Promise me you say I'm not the same, not the same. You may need to be gentle with this one to get better results. I just pushed it for the signs. There is a lot of fun stuff that could be done with this one when it comes to stereo imaging. The preset section was a little bit of a letdown because they're not really that versatile, but overall, this plugin was really okay. It comes down to whether or not you would want to replace some of the industry's best plugins like Waves S1 and Melda Production M Stereo Processor with Stereo Savage, or even free plugins like Polyverse Wider. So let us know in the comments if you think this one is worth it. And this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful and enjoyable, and if you did, Please leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this and visit intercoreaudio.com for more details and reviews. Thank you for watching.